This time, I'm going to talk about self-supervised learning with Python. There are many types of machine learning method. We have supervised learning. That means we have data set and all those data are labeled. In this example, we have all the grips and we knew they are grips. And then we use all those data as input to feed into our model and trying to make prediction. And then we have unsupervised learning. That means we have all different kind of data and we don't know their name. We don't have labels for them. And we are using all those data to feed our model. And then we have semi-supervised learning. Semi-supervised learning is a machine learning method in which we have input data and a fraction of input data is labeled as output. It's a mix of supervised and unsupervised learning. So we have input data and all those data, we don't have a label. And in the meanwhile, we have output data. We have label for that. We will use this input data and the output data to feed our model. And then we'll try to make prediction. Then we have reinforcement learning method. In reinforcement learning, we have an agent and the agent will take certain actions in the environment. And then the state of the agent will change and based on the actions of the agent, we will have a reward or punishment to this agent. This is like playing a video game. You take certain action and if you have a good action, you will get a point. Otherwise, maybe your point will be deducted. In my YouTube channel, I have several separate videos about supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. If you haven't watched those videos, you're welcome to watch them first. In this video, I'm going to talk about self-supervised learning. Then, what is self-supervised learning? Self-supervised learning is a machine learning process where the model trains itself to learn one part of the input from another part of the input. It is also known as predictive or pretext learning. In this process, the unsupervised problem is transformed into a supervised problem by auto-generating the labels to make use of the huge quantity of unlabeled data. It's crucial to set the right learning objective to get supervision from the data itself. So, in this self-supervised learning, the model is trying to supervise itself with the data. This is how the self-supervised learning process looks like. We will try to use data to make predictions and we can predict the future from the past or predict the future from the recent past or predict the past 
from the present or predicts the top from the bottom. In general, we are using this purple part of the data try to make a prediction about this cyan part. It sounds like self-supervised learning and unsupervised learning are quite similar. So what's the difference? In short, unsupervised learning can be considered as the superset of self-supervised learning as it does not have any feedback loops. On the contrary, self-supervised learning has a lot of supervisionary signals that act as feedback in the training process. There is a concept called uh, contrastive learning. What is contrastive learning? This method is using different set of data. For example, we use this cat and then we have another picture of another cat. We are trying to train this model to recognize, okay, this picture and this picture although it's different cat and with a different angle but in general they are all cat so this is called a positive pair and in the meantime we will feed the model with a picture of cat and the picture of dog and we are trying to teach to train the model, let the model know, okay, this picture is different from this one because this is a cat and this is a dog. This is called a negative pair. So we have a positive pair and negative pair. That's why we call this method as contrastive learning. Then, I'll talk about the model I'm using in this video. It's called Bootstrap Your Own Latent, or BYOL. In this model, we have two processes. One is called Online Network, the top part. Another one is called target network, the bottom part. So we will use the same input image to go through the both network. And the online network is a learner network, which learn against the representation made by the target network on the same image of different augmentation. That means we are trying to go through this online network and make a prediction about the output of this target network. Now you can see the differences between BYOL and uh, contrastive learning is that the goal of BYOL is similar to contrastive learning, but with one big difference. BYOL does not worry about whether dissimilar samples have dissimilar representations because there's no negative pairs for BYOL. One of the most important methods in self-supervised learning is data augmentation. Because we don't have a label for our data set. 
How does the model know a picture is similar to another one? For example, we have this original image, and then we will do some transformation for this original image. We can resize it and crop it. You see, this is only part of the image. And then we can change it to gray scale. And we can change the color. We can blur the image. There are many, many methods here. For example, we can even rotate the image. And then we will train our model, telling the model, OK, although they might have a different angle, they might have a different color, but they are all the same image. In this way, we can train our model to learn how to recognize a picture as a same picture, although they change it a little bit. And from this point, we can go further if we change to another human, our model will recognize, OK, even though those two persons might be different, but they are all human. In this video, I use STL10 dataset as the input for training a model. And you can download the dataset from this link. Let's take a look at the data sample. This STL10 dataset was created by Stanford University. And there are many pictures like this. And they are all 96 times 96 color pictures. You can see there are like airplanes and all those birds and all those animals here. And you can download from this website. It is totally free. Because this model is trying to process huge amount of image data. So we need GPU power to do that. I don't have a GPU on my desktop. When I try to run the model on my local PC, it froze my PC completely and I can't finish that. Luckily, we can use Google Colab to do the model training and also it's totally free. You only need a Gmail account in order to use the service. So let's go to Google Colab to run our model. First, you need to install those two packages into your Colab account. I did that already, so I won't do it again. You just use this command and execute it, and it will install those two packages for you. And then you can run the Python code. I will upload this Python code to my GitHub so you can download and try it by yourself. You can see here, the Python code will download the data 
and then run the model to train our model with the downloaded data. Because I already downloaded it, so it won't do it again. But if you are first time to run it, Google Colab will download the data set for you. You see, it starts the training. It will take some time, so we'll take a look after it finished. Now the training is completed. And when we check the accuracy, it's 85.2%. This is a pretty good result. This is how you can do self-supervised learning using BYOL method with Python. Please provide your comments and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.